Today we're going to talk about the six things that I think can ruin what could have been a good cocktail. Welcome to Comment Cocktails. I'm your host Derek Shore and I want to talk about six things that I think are key to making a poor cocktail. That way you know to avoid them so you can make the good cocktail. So first, the number one, ordered by not really great to just completely atrocious. The first one is just free pouring or pouring by eye. If you're measuring by eye and you don't have some type of jigger or an oxo or whatever to measure your ingredients, you're just sort of making it up as you go. And I've seen plenty of people take a tall glass, pour some orange juice, and they just do this with their bottle until they're like, oh, that's good. That's, that's how much I usually use for my vodka. Like, based on what facts? You just did this. That doesn't even do anything. What happened when the bottle was full? Now you're actually pouring more, or are you less? There's different control. Give me a break. Use some sort of measuring product. Even a shot glass. Yet those same people are going to go back home, they're going to make some banana bread for Christmas, and they're going to have their teaspoons, they're going to have their cups, and they're going to have their measures, and they're going to bake it because they don't want to screw up the banana bread, but it's completely fine to make a trashy-ass cocktail. Give me a break. And here's one that I see happen a lot at bars, weddings, and, and even at home to some degree, is the, the overpour. Of course, what people are doing is they're overpouring to give you more for your money. And I think what some people don't understand is what I want from my money is a very nice experience. Cocktail creation is something that's extracurricular. You don't need to do it, but you do it to enjoy it. So why do I want to enjoy a crappy ass cocktail? Because it now tastes like rubbing alcohol. Or I get straight up tequila and it was supposed to be a Maya Mule. Give me a break. Put the right appropriate amount of alcohol into the drink. Don't over pour because you're trying to be friendly. If you really like the person, give them a nice well-balanced cocktail. Number three, incorrect dilution. If you're stirring a cocktail in here, 30, 45 seconds stir with a nice piece of ice or a couple cubes of ice, that's gonna give you a nice proper dilution. Watch our video on dilution if you wanna know more. If you're making a, a strong shot, some people say, don't add any water to it because it's lowering my value. If you're getting everything that's in the strainer, it doesn't matter if I thinned out your one ounce of vodka with a quarter ounce of water. All it's doing is making it taste better. You're still getting your one ounce. If you're shaking a cocktail, 10 to 15 seconds. Get the right proper dilution because water makes a difference on aroma. Aroma is one of our most sensitive elements within our face. You want to have all the senses playing part. Make it look good, make it smell good, and make it taste good. And there's some other senses too. Just stick your finger in it for feeling. Number four, using canned citrus or plastic bottle citrus. Don't use your Rose's Lime Cordials. Don't use your little lemon plastic thing with the green top and squeeze them in. I've seen some people who've, who've created videos in response to Common Man Cocktails and they show me how they made their drink and they're like squeezing like this, this fake ass lemon concentrate in there. I'm like, dude. Get oranges and lemons and citrus that are at the store. Every store in America probably has some level of citrus. Come on. To make matters work, a lot of those citrus components and fruit that are in bottles have stabilizing agents, which do impact the flavor, and when combined with other nuanced flavor of your cocktail, could just throw it out of whack and make it taste a little weird. Now we get into the nitty gritty. Number five, using a subpar ingredient. What a travesty. Okay, so we've all learned our lessons. No more Rose's Grenadine, use a real Grenadine. No more uh, plastic citrus, use real citrus. No more $6 vermouth, use a real vermouth. Here's what drives me nuts. People will complain that they want to just spend $1.99 on the Rose's Grenadine because buying a good bottle of Grenadine that's 17 fluid ounces for, I don't know, somewhere in the, between 7 and $12 and then paying 5 to 10 to ship it, that's a $20 bottle. I can't believe I'm going to spend $20 on a bottle of grenadine. I don't, it's not worth it to me. That same person, when you check their Instagram account, has a photo of them at a sports bar with two rum and cokes in their hand. There's $24 worth of crappy ass cocktail that you're perfectly willing to spend. But when somebody says, here, how great a craft cocktail, I don't have the money. My theory is that people are making these excuses because they don't want to use these quality ingredients because they're going to find out that the cocktail really tastes different and it's going to ruin them for life. They're not going to want to go buy watered down Captain Morgan original spice with some Diet Coke they're going to want a real cocktail and that's a little bit daunting to people. Maybe it makes them feel like a snob, but you don't have to be a snob. You just don't have to be an idiot. 
make a good cocktail because it's, again, this is the enjoyment of life. You should be enjoying it to its fullest extent. We only have so many years in this planet, so just buy some good ingredients and make a good cocktail and ruin yourself for the crappy stuff. Last, the biggest travesty of them all, unbalanced cocktails. This is when you get that cocktail that's too sweet, way too sour, too tart, overly bitter. Maybe it's just watered down. Maybe it's too boozy or it's flat. Maybe it's just boring. You don't have to be a physicist to know how to make a good balanced cocktail. There's only a few rules that you usually have to follow. We've created videos on it with like the 2-1-1 balance. Two parts strong, one part sour, one part sweet. Boom! You've got yourself a cocktail. Add your proper amount of dilution using the shaking or the stirring and you're there. If you're building your own cocktail, it's very important. If you're modifying a cocktail, it's probably even a little bit more important because you don't want to throw it off too much because you're using a base to begin with. And overall, all these rules kind of fall into place. Not having proper dilution leads to an unbalanced drink. Overpouring alcohol leads to an unbalanced drink. Using crappy ass citrus can lead to an unbalanced drink. It doesn't have the same sugar quantities. It doesn't have the same citrus quantities in the bite, in the sours. Having a balanced cocktail isn't just to say you made a good cocktail. It's to appreciate from the start, the middle, and the finish of the drink. If it's a little sweet up front, you want to get that. If the middle has some nuanced cardamom or chamomile or a little subtle black licorice, maybe a little bitter coffee, you should be able to taste those nuances. And maybe the back end's dry. Maybe it has a little bit of sweet. Maybe it has a lingering herbal flavor. You lose all that when one of your components dominates the drink. No, not all drinks are well balanced. Nine out of 10, probably yes. Pina Colada, no, it's not a well balanced drink, but they got lucky. So you could just take a bunch of ingredients, mix them together, and hope you get lucky, burn half your alcohol trying to experiment. Or you could follow some very basic rules to try and create that craft balanced cocktail and it's probably going to taste very nice. It's going to accent all the subtleties that you want. You don't have to be a snob to appreciate those flavors, but you also don't have to be an idiot when you create the cocktail. So there you go. Those are the six kind of atrocities from the subtle to the worst when creating a craft cocktail. All I'm saying is to appreciate one of the one things in life that we have that's built for appreciation. It's not that hard. We're teaching you how to drink. If you take a cranberry juice cocktail and you add, again, one and a half ounces of vodka, four and a half ounces of cranberry juice cocktail, like ocean spray, you create what is known as the cake.